nice and loud uh, the, the, this this morning. And Joe, um, uh, it really, uh, I guess it's really December. It's definitely cold here. Uh, over to you, uh, Bob. Uh, W1GTH and the pre-net. This is, uh, I hope, uh, WA2 RAS. WA2 RAS and the pre-net of the AM carrier group. This is W1GTH, Bob in Walcott, Connecticut. And, uh, yeah, good morning. Well, actually, I just uh, got back from my daughter. She uh, had to go up to her girlfriend's up in Massachusetts uh, last night. So uh, uh, normally I get over there and let the doodle dog out uh, twice a day. But uh, I run over this morning because uh, <laughs> I didn't get over there until later last night. And so it's been a while for him. So uh, it, is, it is about uh, 12 degrees here, I think, this morning morning and uh, so I kind of had to watch it. I went down on the driveway there um, a couple of days ago trying to clear things off out there and um, didn't hurt myself. Kind of broke the fall with my um, with my left arm here and I think I kind of sprained my wrist a little bit though because uh, so it's uh, and, and it's kind of sore but uh, anyhow I just want to pop in here. Um, I'm just uh, making breakfast here and I uh, want to pop in and get my uh, position here in um, fairly early because um, I'm only only in here for one round so uh, I'm not sure who it goes back to but I'm going to take a chance and say that uh, Steve has got the uh, info on uh, on who's in here and who isn't in here so um, K2FW this is W1GTH I'll be here for the net Good enough Bob you know I forgot that uh I forgot to tell you, remember those pictures that were going around? I think you sent them out. It was you and a couple of other fellows, and uh, you look like you're in great shape. You look like you're in very, very good shape. Just uh, on, a, on a quick over, how's your daughter, how, how is she doing uh, uh, health-wise? She's uh, everything uh, okay now, Bob? Yeah, well, thanks for asking. She, uh, of course, she has to go for scans every, uh, well, she's supposed to go every uh, every three months, and uh, she's been kind of putting it, <coughs> excuse me, putting it off a little bit, but I kind of, I talked to her, and we, uh, she was going every six months, and I, and we, we came to a compromise, I think, where uh, she's going to go every four months now, and, uh, you know, it's all that radiation. Well, there's two, two different kind of scans they do, there is a spot on her spine uh, that it went to, and uh, they have to do that with an MRI, and um, then they have to do the uh, CAT scan, it's either a CAT or a PET scan, to make sure it hasn't gone anyplace else, and the last two scans came back uh, uh, good, so um, that's about as good as we can hope for, so um, anyhow, that's, uh, that's what's going on with her, and, uh, and thanks for asking, Steve. Uh, back to you. Okay. Well, sounds uh, sounds encouraging. It certainly does sound encouraging. All right. Uh, let's see. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven so far. So uh, I'll turn it back up to you, and then you can turn it to Perry, and then to Frank. And uh, we'll see if uh, you know. Drag your feet in between transmissions. See if uh, see if there's any other uh, early check-ins. Uh, back up to you, uh, Al, and uh, how's Rosie doing? Uh, this is K2FW in the AM carrier net. How are you? <laughs> she's sleeping out for breakfast. <clears throat> I made the mistake of feeding her, and now she's not, uh, you're not going to hear from her. I want to give a special thanks to uh, Terry and uh, Frank. They were in CUSO, just a couple of KCs up, and uh, they, uh, at home, they did uh, the impending arrival of the, uh, the free net, so... Special thanks to you guys, and uh, so there you go. Uh, but 16 inches of snow, I did not need that, and I'm doing all the work. And uh, I took machinery to handle the job, but you know the stuff is heavy. The machinery is heavy, and the snow was uh, surprisingly uh, dense. It had a very high water content. That just means the uh, blower made more noise as it grunted through the thing. It didn't slow it down any, but uh, you 
usual uh, ice packed uh, windrow that uh, or snow bank, or you can't call it, I guess. Is, yeah, that was uh, a little bit of a challenge getting through that. Anyway, over to you, Terry, uh, and uh, thanks again, guys. It really made life a lot, a lot easier for us uh, getting things started up here. I was scratching my head as to what to do. Uh, W3MMR, Perry, W1VTP, uh, in the uh, AM counter, net, uh, pre net, I guess you call it. NE1S. NE1S recognized. <laughs> Notice what time it was. At least I don't remember them. <laughs> it's been years. Well, I checked in, I guess, last week, you know, the week before. But before that, it was like a long time, like eight years or something, according to my log, since I checked in with the net. Those guys in 3840, I just went up there and gave them a piece of my mind, because I know that's who they were. And uh, that uh, if they don't behave themselves, uh, you and I are going to be on there every single Sunday. Uh, because I guess it's their frequency, and they wanted to QRM us off the frequency. So, uh, you know, things are, you know, it's weird. It's like, I guess that can be a topic for a lot of different nets is the QRMing that goes on today. It's because there's no, there's no enforcement. And, uh, you know, which is really sad for the human condition that the only thing that prevents people from acting that way is that they're going to get fined or chastised for it. In other words, common sense and decency doesn't keep them from doing it. Only retribution by law enforcement entity keeps him from doing it. And that, that it just, just freaks me out. That's like these places where you see newspapers when they do, used to have newspapers piled up and there was a, a box there or a dish and you put your money in and then you take your paper. Well, if there was somebody standing there, these dishonest people, People would put the money in the plate and then take the paper. But it's like if there's nobody there, like their their attitude would be, it's like, why should I why should I pay for it? Nobody's gonna see me steal the paper, and, and that's just it. So now it's like, with little or none, uh, hardly any uh, FCC enforcement, that, that, that people are free to be as nasty as they want to be. 
And the only thing previously that was stopping them was that they would get fined. <laughs> so it's just, uh, just astounding to me. Anyway, beautiful signals coming through here this morning. Very crowd, very strong. Everybody around. I don't know who I turn it to. There was, there was a lots and lots of breakers that came in, so it was just me, Alan Perry, and the other guys. I didn't write down anybody's call, so I didn't have a pen, which, like for this roundtable business, is a necessity. So I'm going to turn it to Steve. I guess whether he liked it or not, he's right no one's down. <laughs> KQFW in the, in the group in the list. WQSDR. K1, Lima, Charlie. I got you, bud. And uh, Larry, I have you as well. Well, I agree 100%, Frank. And, uh, you know, with the lack of enforcement, it's gotten a little worse over the years. Well, maybe it's gotten a lot worse. But that's correct. That's the human condition when there's no consequences to be paid. <laughs> Can't get away from that. K three Q O Z K three Q Z V. Yeah, K three Q O Z. Okay, Steve. Well, Mum hasn't got into uh, the cookie baking yet, but uh, when she gets into it, why well, it'll go for about two days. She uh, makes up a real variety. Uh, yeah, pretty bad. And uh, if there's no enforcement, if there's no consequences to pay, people are going to do and uh, help themselves for the most part. And uh, that's the way it is. That's the way it is. Uh, let's see, we're about six minutes before, so Larry, you haven't made a transmission yet. And drag your feet just in case Joe... N1VIV uh, uh, shows up. Hopefully his voice is uh, pretty pretty much back to uh, normal. Sounds like Perry's got the cold that, <laughs> that Joe had. Uh, up to you, Larry, and then turn it over to Bud, K1 Lima Charlie. Any one S up there in, uh, in the wilds of Maine. Pick it up, Larry. K2 Fuzzy Wuzzy in the uh, AM carrier net free net. Morning, N1VIV. Okay, good. You're Joe. 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 I'll put you at the top. Uh, Larry, make a transmission, turn it to Bud, and then Bud, if you would be so kind to turn it over to uh, to Joe. Go ahead, Larry. K1IC. One out. Yeah, I hear uh, Gary K1IC and Bruce WX10 checking in too. Good morning, Bruce and Gary. Uh, okay, K2FW and the pre-net NE1S. Well, good morning. Frank and uh, Steve and Al and Perry and Bud and Joe. I already said good morning to uh, Gary and Bruce. Yeah, well, Perry, sorry you have a cold. That sucks. So far, I've been able to avoid one uh, this season. I usually end up getting about one a year. So it uh, keeps the immune system uh, uh, woken up, I guess. Here we have commentary on, uh, on what people do without the threat of uh, force, without the threat of, reprodu of uh, retribution. Uh, it comes from a lack of respect of one another. And uh, it seems to be just getting worse over time. For lack of respect for another's person and the lack of respect for, for another's property. And uh, the government, of course, is one of the biggest offenders. <laughs> and I'll leave it there. Uh, so it's coming up on that time pretty soon. So uh, right over to you, K1LC. And the uh, pre-net, anyone else? Okay, Larry, very good. Nice signal down here in east, southeastern Massachusetts. Anyone s K1LC. Uh, 
Yeah, it's 14 degrees, nice chilly morning. I'm getting some unwanted feedback here. I'm not sure where I... But anyway, I won't keep it long because I know it's getting close to uh, net time. I heard uh, Gary check in. I didn't hear WX1O. So I, I think... Well, let me turn it over back to Joe and he can... Uh, you know, Take it from here as far as who would go next. N1VIV, K1LC. W1EKG. Yeah, okay, so we've got uh, <coughs> Ross in there, W1EKG. So I've got some semblance of a list, but I need to get the, the, the top of the list, Steve. Let me see. Oh, my frequency looks good. I'm going to leave it right there. Came down and to warmed things up a little bit. This is on one VIV. Warmed things up a bit uh, about a half hour ago. Jumped in the shower real quick. I got a little bit of a busy morning, but we're here and that's good. We've got about two minutes. So, uh, Steve, if you have any semblance of rundown, uh, that would be uh, eternally uh, helpful. And uh, we can uh, get things launched here. Let me see if you can guide me a little bit here. I've got me and you, and, and then there's a gap between where uh, uh, you and where uh, Bud checked in. From Bud on down, I think I've got it. But, uh, in any case, hopefully I'm making it down there. New Jersey. Okay. Uh, P2FW, this is N1 VIV. Yeah, I drifted up. There we go. This thing should be pretty stable now. I'm all vacuum tubes here, <laughs> guys. In case anyone's wondering, uh, yeah, you have uh, you have Bruce, Gary, and uh, and Ross. So at the top, uh, number one would be Al, and then number two would be Perry, and then after Perry would be his dad, Frank, W2SDR, and then myself. And then Howie, WF2Q, uh, Jeff, WA2RAS, Bob, W1GTH, Larry, NE1S, and then back uh, again to Bud. And you said you have uh, Bud, uh, Bud on down. And sounds like Rosie's uh, very, very quiet this morning. Also sounds, uh, Joe, like your uh, voice is back to normal. So take it away. You're just about uh, uh, at uh, net time. K2FW. Back to you, Joe. Yeah, okay, Steve. Very good. Over your one. Okay, yeah, right in the... <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, it's still got a little bit of funniness going on here, but still, nothing too, uh, nothing too terrible. Let's just see, uh... I, yep, I've got the list just fine. Uh, just, just for a quick correction, Steve, can you give me, uh, Frank's, uh, prefix? Yeah, it's a whiskey. Whiskey 2 SDR. Got it. Okay. Good morning to you. Okay, great. Al, stop. Harry, Frank, yourself. Ali, Jack. Bob, Larry. Al, Gary. Ross. Wow. That's a great turnout, right? Oh, okay. That's on my phone. A couple sips of coffee here for the cause. I'm going to launch this thing and skip today's date at the top of the seat here. I see not too many Sundays left in 2019. Come in. Get here. And then I'll turn out a little bit. How did that happen? I want to what that new decade brings. I heard a little bit of something. Talk about today, but 
I get things rolling. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to AM Terry. Matt, my name is Joe. My call is N1ZIZ. And I'm located in Stoneman, Cincinnati. We have the carrier unit, which is a Sunday morning here at 8 a.m. local time. Here at 3835 on the 75 unit day. We have the carrier unit, which is established for the purpose of promotion and enjoyment of the 8 a.m. mode. The casual net, so there's no requirement to check in other than the name of the office in the 8 a.m. mode. We certainly would like to hear from uh, new stations who are just beginning to call this. It's not been the AM. Whether you're trying to resurrect an old phone anchor or maybe trying to get a new model in the uh, and then you give me some of the developers assistance here with knowledge and information for that end. So all the up. I'm just going to get the format of the next two seconds to call this it. And if you're checking turn round one, you can see turn tack those folks in at the end of round one. And if you're checking turn round two, you can see how these are folks in the jump. So we want to pause momentarily and take a moment for anybody who might be listening to this one now. Whether you're a licensed radio amateur or maybe a shortwave listener in either case. If you're just listening this morning, uh, good morning. And I uh, also want to let folks know if for whatever reason you're on a short timeline today, just let me know uh, when you check in uh, by saying something like, please snap me to the top. And I'll do my best to uh, pick up at the top of the list so that we can get in here and then also whatever other responsibilities you may have. I wanted to comment that I'm probably good. I might be fine now that I, I, I was able to uh, get up early to get the next hour behind me and uh, before I got down here. So that's good. So I'm good to about 9.30. And then I'm going to have to go in a flurry of breakfast at 9.30. I guess so I'm going to start that To be there for. And uh, 9.30 is my departure time. So I'll still have to turn things up. So I'll see. So here's the station that he has not relayed to me. The, <coughs> the pre net check in. We've got Al W1BCP from the US. We've got Terry uh, W3MMR. Frank um, W2SDS. K2SW. Um, Howie WSF. Uh, Jeff W2RS. Uh, Bob W1BC from Walcott. Uh, Larry, any one S, all the way up in there, uh, the big north of the great name. Um, and, uh, uh, K1 Lima Charlie, we've got uh, Gary, uh, K1 LP, uh, Bruce, WXCNO, <coughs> and, uh, Ross, W1 EKG. So let's take check in from the, uh, Second call is the two land stations for the AM carrier net. Uh, please call me. This is N1 VIV. WA2MER. Okay, good morning to Jim and Steve. Uh, and Steve's got WA2MER and KBC very good. Any other two land stations for the next two format? Okay, well, we had quite an elaborate uh, gathering of uh, folks here in the sand. Everybody got here early enough to, to be noticed. Any other second call district stations for the next two format? Then one of the items. Okay, any first call this station? One land station to the main carrier net, please call me. K E one M I, good morning, Joe. With the one zero Bravo. Whiskey one hotel alpha Foxtel. Wow, great signals all the way around. One of you, Greg, from up there in uh, Vermont. Can't you want to mind? I recognize uh, Gary. Good morning to you. Good to you. W one Z B. Very strong. And Harrison, you're uh, you're very strong. You're stronger than uh, than usual uh, here. So you can just good. That's good morning to you from just a few miles uh, west of me here in uh, Waterford, Connecticut. W one E K F. Any other one-land stations for the net? Please call me. 
1SH. Good morning. Yeah, there's Bill. Quiet car. That's Connecticut. Wow, what a nice uh, turn it. Been turned at the same way from my desk. Are able to swing by and say good morning on Sunday morning. Very grateful for that. Um, okay, yeah, uh, very good. Everyone, uh, S8. Northeast corner. Yes, I recognize. Any other one man station sitting at East Corner? All right, nothing else here or there, so let's do a general call to any stations anywhere. Any stations anywhere. One, two, three, four, and beyond. I'm carrying it through from there. Then one VIV. Hey, Joe, have we ever hit 20? Oh, yeah, I'd have to go back. I've got this long series. I think it's about six books worth. Like, uh, I picked these little things up at CVS, but they're basically mm -hmm. cards that are spiral bound. And that's how I capture, um, you know, uh, the net and try to keep it in some degree of perpetuity. Unfortunately, not, uh, mm -hmm. not electronic. Mm -hmm. I consider that they haven't gotten to it yet. They're just convenient. And so I've got about six of these. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, my time to have it a long time. And, uh, and, uh, my recollection would say is somewhere in the neighborhood of 23, 24, 25. We have absolutely, uh, uh, reached that, uh, number in the past for sure. But I have to go back and look through it. But I probably should get some kind of a high water mark so that way I know if we ever will. See that, and I think uh, you remind, remind me in the in the birthday of uh, uh, how what anniversary was um, coming up in February. So I think, uh, I'll uh, I'll let you know on the uh, on my transmission. Well, I'm counting 19 now. All right, back to you, uh, Joe. I don't want to hold it up uh, since we have so many here. Yeah, I, I think I have a clear recollection of 23. And we may have even had 24 or 25, but that would have been maybe a good five or six. Yeah, this is fabulous. Mm -hmm. And I won't just slow it down here at all either. Let's give another listen just in case. Any other check ins, any stations anywhere for this? I'm carrying it, please call me. Then one of the items. Alright, well, that's going to do it for round one, so uh, let me. Uh, Run through the list real quick so folks can, uh, excuse me, voice is still a lot better than it was. Uh, let's run through the list and folks can make a reference and, uh, we'll launch this thing uh, right away. Yeah. So I'll get things started with a few very brief comments on the thing now. W1DCP. W1DCP with Syndicate Perry, W3MMR. W3MMR was sent it to uh, W2SDR in Frank, Maryland, New Jersey, and we have W2SDR was sent it to KTSW. KTSW was sent it to Howard, WSTQ. And WSTQ was sent it to Jeff, WA2RAF. WA2RAF was sent it to uh, W1GT8. W1GT8. Send it to Larry, N-E-1-S. N-E-1-S, we send it up to Bud, uh, K-1, uh, Lena Charlie, just uh, southeast of Boston there. And uh, K-1, uh, Lena Charlie, we send it to K-1, India Charlie. There we go. Okay. K-1-I-C, we send it to W-X-1-L. Uh, Bruce up there in Vermont, uh, W-X-1-L, we send it to... Uh, W1EKG in Whitman, Massachusetts. W1EKG was sent to Jim uh, WHMAR. Jim WHMAR was sent to KB2N QN. KB2N QN was sent to uh, 
think you want him off. And, uh, and as well. I think you want him I would think it's Jerry, W1, and B. W1's at B, it's in Harrison. W1HAS and W1HAS Bill, KD1 and the quiet corner of the net. Goodness gracious, that some left. Better not uh, uh, elaborate the commentary too much. Bill, if there's other check-ins, we're going to attack him in after you, and I wouldn't be surprised if there is. Yeah, that one. Um, and we'll attack him in after you, and if not, it'll come back up to the top of the moon for some semblance of a round two. Uh, just for the sake of uh, <coughs> keeping things as organized as we can, because I know sometimes I uh, struggle with that a bit, folks can let me know if you're going to shoot for round two, that would increase my ability to efficiently get through a round two. And uh, also, uh, I guess we just got to do our best to keep our comments. But so what brief in turn, we do have 19 seconds uh, today. Well, some of the pre-net conversations certainly seemed into a subject that I... Uh, been on my mind, probably on lots of folks' minds, you know, just general uh, stability. I know that that topic uh, may be complicated to uh, keep comments brief on, but I guess, uh, you know, just the concept of uh, treating each other with uh, respect and, uh, and, and decency is something that I, I, I just kind of really believe that if you, if you seek to model it every day, then, then you'll kind of uh, find ways to, to strengthen it. A culture that uh, that respects and, and honors that. You know, maybe even in the face of people who are, you know, people face a lot of stress and they act out in ways that aren't always uh, so productive. And you know, so uh, being uh, you know understanding of that at times, but also uh, you know for being uh, <coughs> having reasonable consequences for you know, that kind of thing. You've got to be a balance. But I don't want to get too much on the soapbox here. Uh, I'm just running the Johnson Viking 2 today. And, um, listen to that on the Hamlin HQ 129X. Not too much else going on here other than it's 19 degrees. That's pretty chilly. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, potential for winter left here. <laughs> and I'm not looking forward to it. I, I find I'm, I do move in shoveling and I'm like, going like Monday or Tuesday and sound like, boy, I'm, I'm just a little right. Anyway, I guess I guess I have to be adjusted and fortified for the winter. Keep our fingers crossed. <clears throat> Let's move it on down the list and uh, see what it brings here with 19 check-ins at this time. On over to you, Al. W1VTP. And the AM carrier net. Take it away. This is N1VIV. Yeah, okay. No, good morning. Good <laughs> morning. Oh, I... I don't know. I, I, I hope that... I hear a few things from people. Mm -hmm. But anyway, you can hear And, uh... Very uh, appreciative of uh, Frank and Perry accommodating us uh, earlier. And uh, Perry, I really need to. I've got a, a whole lot of curiosity going on there. What, what kind of camera are you using for those really wonderful shots that you have, you have on your uh, uh, your bio biography? It's amazing the uh, EXIF data has been stripped, so I can't find out from that. I'm just curious because they have really uh, amazing uh, pictures. So if you must have uh, photography as I have here also. And also, I compliment you on your choice of the uh, telephone LP500. I'm using the 700 here. It might have been your dad that recommended uh, it to me. I'm not sure about that. It was either uh, you, uh, Frank, or Eric. Uh, one of you guys has... Uh, the pressure on me to get it. I'd already been thinking about it. And it's a great monitor. I, I love it. And the uh, I'm not using the wa waveform per se, but uh, it, it's one of the best sculpts for triggering uh, for uh, waveforms. I'm using the uh, the modulation monitor right now. But anyway, uh, we had one degree this morning out at the duck coop, so it it got pretty cold. And uh, I did a lot of uh, 16 inches of snow 
uh, here at Manchester, New Hampshire, and uh, I just wasn't was not ready for that at all. It took me three days to finish the job. So having said that, over to uh, Frank. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it had been a while since I'd worked to uh, Frank. I don't know where that comment came from. <laughs> it seems like. Uh, well, I did work in the other day, but uh, before that, uh, I hadn't been uh, working here very much, so uh, I believe non compass methods if I've had any laps. Over to you, Frank, and, uh, and the AM carrier that's WLN WTT. Oh, wait a minute, I turned over the ferry. W3 AM carrier, go ahead, pick it up. Uh, Frank, this is W1 VTP in the AM carrier in that W3 MMR. Uh, real good, Al. And good morning to everyone. The name here is Perry Pop Echo Romeo Romeo Yankee, and the call is Whiskey 3 Mike Mike Romeo, located in Chester, uh, Pennsylvania, seven miles southwest of Philadelphia in the urban suburbs of Philadelphia here. Running in a non 200D SDR, Sure SM7B microphone into an AL80B amplifier, 175 watts of carrier into an 80 meter 600 ohm ladder line fed doublet up uh, about 60 feet. Uh, temperatures uh, starting to rise a bit here, 24 degrees this morning. It was about uh, 19 um, and about uh, 4.30 this morning when I got up. And was doing some operating up on 3885. Um, so it's a chilly one today. And uh, obviously it's a lot uh, colder up uh, up in New England from what you guys are saying. But nevertheless, it's still pretty cold. So I uh, hope you guys uh, don't didn't get hit too hard with the snow uh, last week. We didn't get any here. It was just all rain. It snowed for maybe a... 20 minutes and then switch right back over to rain and I saw that there was on the news or, or a news article online I was just scrolling past it and then could be getting more snow uh, soon here with another coastal system coming up the coast more snow for you guys not for us here but I have not checked in on that and a uh, quick comment on uh, the pictures, Al. Well, thanks for the compliments. And honestly, Al, if that's you're talking about the ones yeah, on my QRZ page or on my website, I used my cell phone. <laughs> I have a Samsung Galaxy um, A20 Alpha 20 um, Android smartphone, and it has a really phenomenal camera and a bunch of different filters you can use. It has a wideband lens. And it has a uh, you know your normal uh, lens as well, and with the zoom and everything, and it works phenomenal. It really does. I was really surprised when when I came home and took a picture with it that it, <laughs> the picture was as good as it was, and it works out really well. So I'm very happy with it. But yep, just a just a camera on the phone there. I've always thought about you know, buying a a nice camera, but maybe that'll be uh, down the line one day there. So this is going to be my one and done. I got a little uh, building a double balance tuner over here, so we're going to hop over to the bench and work on that and listen out. And I'm recording the net here, so if anybody ever wants to go check out this net uh, today or or past ones that I've been on uh, since I've been uh, here in the group, just you can check out my YouTube channel, the AM Window, on YouTube, and uh, the 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 net will be up there uh, uh, this afternoon. I'll I'll be able to get the recording up there. So nevertheless, 7-3, guys, great signals out of everyone. I hope everybody stays warm, has a great week. And uh, uh, thanks, Joe and Steve, uh, uh, for the uh, for your duties here uh, with running the net. Um, over to you, Pop, a W2SDR and the AM carrier net, 7-3 from W3MMR. W3MMR and the AM carrier net, W2SDR. Oh, good, uh, solid transmission. I'm Perry, and also from uh, everybody else, from you, Al, and had me right on that push to talk. Because you were going to turn it to me, and I was ready to say, it's Perry's turn, but yeah, came through right at the end of your, tra <laughs> of your transmission. Uh, I think I was the one that recommended uh, the LP700, um, Al, 
I was so happy with mine when I first got it. I think we worked, and I told you all about it. It's it's a great unit. It's expensive, but I think, especially if you're an avid AMer, it, it, it does an awful lot. And it, it, if uh, if you bought test equipment that did everything that the 700 does, the 700 all of a sudden becomes somewhat of a bargain. Now, you know, not everybody needs all those functions, but it certainly is a, a very nice unit, and I've been very happy with it. 22 degrees here this morning in uh, Salem County, out on my deck. I think this is the coldest morning yet this uh, winter, or s s fall, actually. Really big group uh, here. I'm using a, an Anon 7000 DLE. Tra a transceiver by Apache Labs, uh, driving an LD MOS uh, amplifier that I put together at about uh, 275 or plus or minus watts of carrier. Uh, I have to agree, uh, the cell phone cameras, I have an iPhone, that's all I use. Uh, it's probably the best camera I ever had, even all my 35 millimeter equipment, and you always have it in your pocket. At least I do, so you always can take pictures. Uh, the days that I'm going to carry around a big camera with lenses are long gone. Uh, I have to go out to the hardware store today and get some Stabil. Uh, I didn't um, winterize my fuel yet in my Vaughn equipment, so um, I'll have to have to do that. I got that on my list here. And uh, let me see. That's a that's about it. Um, I'll, I'll listen out. This will be my one and check in and listen to everybody else on here. Just one comment. Uh, I'll be listening here. This, this is my second operating position in the house. Is, is I wonder why I don't hear most of you guys during the week. Uh, I know most of you are avid AMers. I'd be interested to know because I think most of us are probably retired or near retirement. and I, I never hear uh, a lots of you guys ever except on the net. So, uh, you know, it's just, uh, I'd just like to know that, um, why, um, why, you know, maybe you guys are on other modes, or maybe you don't operate uh, that much, but uh, that, uh, it's so it's puzzled me, because there's tons of guys check in here, but uh, that's the only time I hear you, so, uh, unless I'm tuning in the wrong locations. Over to you, Steve, W2FW in the AM carrier net, W2SDR. Yeah, okay, Frank, this is uh, K2FW. In the uh, AM carry note, I do not have the answer to that. I know some of these guys check into the uh, AWA, the Antique Wireless Association, that don't know if they're up on the uh, 3885, 3875, you know, that AM window section. I hate to refer to it as the AM window, but I guess it is. <laughs> But uh, I don't have an answer for you on that one. That's a that's a good question. But I do know some of these guys do check into the uh, to the uh, AWA net, which I think is uh, later today. Uh, I think Joe GMS runs that, and uh, he's been in here a few times. Haven't heard Nick for a while. KG2IR. He checks in here every once in a while. Uh, Joe N1VIV. Uh, in early February, it will be 16 years, 16 years that, uh, that this net's been on this frequency. So, actually, uh, that was, uh, February 8th of 04. And, uh, so, hard to believe it's been 16 years. I hope Dick gets back on, uh, one of these days, he's uh, recuperating from some of his uh, uh, medical problems, and uh, hopefully, uh, I, I have been in touch with him uh, over the past week uh, via email, and uh, he seems to uh, seems to be recovering, uh, and hopefully, we'll be getting on from his uh, from his new QTH next to uh, where well he lives real close to Howie WF2Q. So, so there you go. Uh, Gary, K1IC, uh, when it gets to your turn, if you want to go off frequency on sideband and discuss some of those things that we were discussing uh, on email, 
uh, in regards to the Straight Key Century Club. Uh, I'd be happy to go off frequency with you uh, on sideband and, you know, maybe we can, you know, get some of those questions answered uh, in, in a quick quick amount of time. I wonder if you were on the, uh, if you've been on the uh, WES over the weekend. I made, uh, I think, 113 contacts yesterday. Uh, put a few hours in, so it's been it's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. I'll probably get on a little bit uh, later today, maybe in the afternoon, a little bit, and uh, try to make some more contacts uh, with the uh, WES. So that's about it from here. I don't want to belabor it. Uh, we have a lot of people on the net, so try to keep the uh, uh, the transmissions uh, a little bit on the short side. Over to you, Howie, and uh, we'll be listening out through the entire first round, unless Gary and I go off frequency. <laughs> so, uh, over to you, Howie, WF2Q, up there in the wilds of uh, Long Island, K2 Fuzzy Wuzzy in the AM carrying it. Okay, K2FW. Got your AM carrying it. Morning from Kings Point, New York on Long Island. This is WF2Q. It's 28 degrees here, and for those of you that don't know, I'm running a BMW 5100B, and barefoot, and an HRO 60, and a uh, 135 foot doublet fed by 450 ohm ladder line, uh, for a 4 to 1 Baron, and a, uh, a Night Viking uh, antenna tuner. Anyway, uh, first quarter. First response to so many, so many topics that came up today. I mean, ham radio is wonderful. I've been doing it for 62 years, but it's not the only thing in my life. During the week, I have interest in music and uh, antique cars. And, uh, I happen to visit uh, one day a week a friend of mine that does high-quality digital printing. And uh, I'll tell you right now, if you can manage to hold your new iPhone steady, and you take it out in bright sunlight, the digital images for that will make a razor sharp 20 by 24 print. The minute you take it indoors and the flash is not on and the camera kicks up the sensitivity of the chip, that super resolution goes away. It'll still be plenty good enough for anything you want to do with it. And, um, I know, I know I use a Canon digital SLR, and I, I, I write two files for every image, because the one file that I use for making prints is far too big. I can't send that one, that one file on, you know, through AOL. So I, I have it write a smaller file so I can send a bunch of pictures. And, uh, technology is absolutely incredible. Uh, we were talking before about uh, who owns what frequency? And the bottom line is, unless you go into like where there were repeater pairs that you know uh, that are going to be enforced, like our friend Hal got a big fine for interfering with. Nobody owns any frequency. And most of the time, courtesy works, and occasionally you're going to get somebody that doesn't work, and some people are, you know. Abnormally sensitive. I had a friend who was a uh, silent key for a long time, AF2N. If we go to a diner for lunch and somebody who ordered their food after we did got their food before, he'd get all bent out of shape. You know, he'd get bent out of shape to anybody. The bottom line is uh, most of the time, you know, count to 10 and uh, move on. I mean, people, you know, 3885 is supposed to be a calling frequency, and then you establish contact and move off, but of course it isn't. Uh, people violate the rules, people tune up on net frequencies, all kinds of stuff. The bottom line is, in the greatest scheme of things, it doesn't matter. And unfortunately, you're not going to check it so I'm going to live with it. Uh, WF2Q said that, and this will be my only transmission. Over to Mr. Jeff, uh, WA2RAS, WF2Q. Uh, okay. Uh, hopefully we're on the air here. Uh, WF2Q and the net WA2REF. So good morning, uh, uh, everybody. Uh, really good signals uh, all around this morning. Um, uh, today we're on a Latin radio. Uh, listening to everybody on a Hamelin HQ215. And uh, 
let's see, interesting uh, <laughs> sort of, uh, we had a power failure here on, on uh, Thursday night uh, for uh, several hours, and I was just about, you know, how did people get along, you know, a hundred years ago without electricity? Frank, uh, W2SCR, um, uh, on the air, uh, and Frank, you are great. Uh, I really, really, really enjoyed uh, your, your comments, and I couldn't agree with you uh, more about the, uh, the lack, for example, the lack of uh, uh, FCC uh, uh, enforcement, and uh, I certainly agree with uh, Joe and about common decency and uh, Howie, uh, your, your comments uh, are also. Uh, I really think that this lawless approach uh, has uh, 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 certainly infected politics and certainly has corrected most uh, media uh, outlets. But um, so, um, uh, so, so, so be it. And Frank, again, as uh, to your comment, which is about, you know, where are all these people? Um, yeah, as, um, you know, as, as Howie mentioned, you know, there's other stuff, even as much as we love ham radio. Uh, for example, I'm, I still work. Uh, you know, so, there, so, there, so there is that. I do get on other, other nets. We have a vintage net, um, you know, for if you have equipment made uh, Uh, let's see, I, I, I also check into an AWA net, and I have a, uh, an AWA net on, uh, on two meters, so um, um, that, 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 keeps me, uh, that keeps me busy. Uh, this will be my only transmission. I will be listening out. Uh, over to you, Bob. Bob, here it comes. Uh, W1GTH. This is WA2RAS. WA2RAS and the AM Carrier Group, W1GTH, Bob and Walcott, and uh, good morning all. And uh, nobody's ever accused me of being an old buzzard. I don't have that much to say, but uh, anyhow, we're running on the uh, ART-13 transmitter, receiving on a BC-348, uh, running into uh, what they call is the only true ladder line. It's a W7FG. I bought it uh, years ago, and I'm happy with it. It's uh, about 600 ohm ladder line, and uh, <clears throat> the only problem is that uh, I've got it running right into the uh, into the house here, and uh, I had to make a special uh, little shim to go underneath the window because. Uh, the, they say this is the only true ladder line in that there is no break in the uh, from the uh, end of the uh, ladder line until it reaches your uh, either your tuner or your uh, or your receiver transmitter or whatever. Um, there is no break in it, and uh, I've been happy with it. Uh, of course, uh, I'm up about 780 feet elevation here, so that helps also. But only running about 100, 110 watts of power, and uh, seems to be getting out pretty good. And I've uh, never had a problem with it. It's been up there for years. So, anyhow. Um, uh, my son Rob was here. He lives in Tucson, Arizona. He was here this week, and unfortunately, he came out because one of his uh, best friends in uh, high school and beyond uh, passed away. He was only 54 years old. He had a brain aneurysm and uh, just dropped, and uh, so Rob came out here, and uh, he was only here for uh, maybe like three days, and then, and then went back, and... Uh, him and my daughter both went uh, went to the wake and the funeral. Uh, sad, but uh, that's the way it is, and uh, you never know. So we got about 13 degrees here. Um, cold morning, and uh, so that's about it uh, for me. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say this about uh, about the uh, 2RM that. Uh, you know, I, I see it on the road constantly. I'm, you know, I graduated high school in 1955, and I am so grateful that I grew up in that era there. I was the beginning of rock and roll and, and hot rods and, and everything 
that I thought was was fantastic, and uh, you know, I, I they took my first Social Security uh, payment out. I think when I was a sophomore in high school, uh, always always worked some kind of a job, and uh, you know, I, I think that uh, I think it's a lack of uh, you know the the attendance at churches has dropped, I guess, uh, hugely, and. And don't get me wrong, I think that uh, some churches that dogma I don't quite agree with, and uh, I think so there's a money-making uh, proposition there sometimes, but this is the only place that we get our, our, our raw and ethical values from, and, uh, you know, my parents made me go to Sunday school, and, uh, and I learned what was right and what was wrong, and today... Uh, I just think that uh, because there's uh, not so much interest in that and uh, attendance has gone way down that, uh, you know, they're, we're gradually losing all of our, our ethical and moral values and that's how I see it and I see it on the road constantly. I mean, <laughs> I don't even know why they put turn signals on cars anymore. Nobody wants to use them. And so, anyhow, I'll get off my soapbox and... Uh, I'm going to pass it over. I'm only going to be in here for one round, Joe, and uh, I'm going to pass it over to Larry and any, anyone else. This is W1GTH. Everybody have a great day. Hey, grab it, Larry. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I'm just going to acknowledge, just to make sure, I think Rob probably heard me today about something there. Not for somebody, but uh, we had N N1 ALF checking in for the morning program. So, uh, Bill KD1S8. You would send it over to um, Rob in one ALF, and then if there's anybody else uh, checking in after you, uh, Rob in one ALF will attack me. If you can, I'll come back to the top. Maybe you want to send it to in uh, one ALF there at the, uh, at the bottom of the list, and that makes 20 check ins, if I'm not mistaken. Pretty, uh, pretty amazing. So let's get it back to you, Larry. Thanks for letting me jump in quick. Any one F. This is in one D out again.
Now, in, in certain conditions, it's quite some moderation, but when it comes to ethics and morals, I don't believe that. So, uh, anyway, now I'll get off my soap mask, but <laughs> I'm only negative four degrees Fahrenheit here in Gray, Maine, uh, this morning. going to do a lot of warming up in the next 24 hours. And the first last one is going to be on Tuesday. It's about seven and a half inches here. And the belt is just uh, pretty heavy stuff. The thing weighs is that here in this location. Uh, for, uh, mm -hmm. Well, I've heard so far, uh, Joe, you were uh, 10 over 9, Al was uh, 20 over 9. Harry, MMR is 5, uh, SDR is 5 over 9. Steve was 15 over 9, Howie S9, Jeff S8, 2 5, perfect copy. Bob, 10 over 9. There you were uh, five over nine. I didn't get a chance to look at the other ones, other stations when they were checking in. Using the homebrew Class D transmitter, 180 watts, into a uh, four-way flow, which uh, basically has the ladder line. Feeding it, 450 ohm ladder line. But I do have a short section of 300 ohm TV twin lead as it comes through the, uh, into the house. Then I switch back to the ladder line into the tuner. It doesn't seem to make a lot of difference on, uh, you know, tuning or performance. Uh, let's see, what else? Well, as far as being on the air, I really don't have a lot of time uh, during the week. And I have a limited time on weekends in the morning. But uh, due to situation here, uh, I do. I'm usually when I'm in the shack, I'm usually building something. Uh, in, in that way, I can, uh, you know, easily address things that come up in the house uh, without, you know, having to go off the air. Uh, but other than that, I try to get out as much as often. Often I'm on 40 meters. On E cars, I check into that once in a while in the mornings. That's a quick check in and check out. So, temperature's gone up to 4 degrees. It started out at 14 when we looked at it earlier. It's up to 18. It's supposed to warm up here quite a bit. We're going to get a rainstorm tomorrow, and I guess more rain on Tuesday. 
but warm temperatures. Give me a chance to clean out some of the gutters full of leaves. Hopefully the snow will melt. It's in there now. Okay, I won't be back for a second round. I'll say 73 to all. And uh, thanks for running in that, Joe. With that, I turn it over to Gary. Down there in uh, Rhode Island. Yeah. K1 IC. You take it. This is K1 LC. Okay. Well, Bud, good morning. Got a few adjustments here. I'm up to snuff. And, uh, Bud, I am in, uh, in Connecticut, not Rhode Island. So uh, you know, make, a, make a, a note in your log. <laughs> Good morning, all. In the a, uh, the, uh, the uh, AM carrier net. This is the K1IC in Fairfield, Connecticut. Running in a non Apache Labs a non 100 Bravo into an Alpha 76A amplifier. Um, it <coughs> antenna is a uh, dipole. Cut for a uh, half wave about 160 meters, fed with open wire lines. It's in um, a nominal uh, uh, Part of it is W7 FG, and the other part is homebrew. And uh, I used to have a Palstar tuner that I used. I still have a tuner, but it needs to be fixed first. So I've been using a 4-to-1 uh, ballon, followed by a 1-to-1 ballon, and then it goes into a tuner that uh, will tune out the... Uh, between the impedance and it works quite well here. So uh, that's the station. The receiver is also the anon, although I have a Mercury 90A and a few other receivers that I can use from time to time. As far as being on the air, I, I do get on in the morning, usually. Uh, when I get up uh, before I go to work, and uh, in the evening, hardly. I, I get on hardly, although more so lately than before. Uh, for one reason or another, but I've been uh, chasing after straight key activities on uh, CW, so uh, when I have a time to operate, it is often uh, on CW and not a, well, I didn't say I'm in a way, <laughs> just not modulated. And um, so I've been doing that. Uh, other than that, um, I, I can't really say much. I, I was on the, the, uh, the weekend sprint uh, yesterday. Uh, not interested in making tons of contacts, but just having fun doing it. I work at other stations, and um, I'm not usually a contester, so uh, it just doesn't matter to me. I do enjoy uh, the CW portion, and my skills have improved, which was one of the goals that I wanted to do, so that's, uh, uh, that's fine. And uh, I don't think I have much else to tell you. At the end of the semester, I had my last class on uh, Friday, so I'm busy uh, assessing now. And we'll do that for most of today, uh, which will probably take me away from the key as well. But that's just the way it has to be. And uh, we're, we're inching closer to retirement, so uh, we'll see how that all plays out. In the next couple of, uh, the next, I would say, the next couple of months, we'll know for sure when the when the date will be. But uh, for, for now, uh, uh, there is negotiations going. On. So uh, that's pretty much what I have to say. Uh, everybody sounding good, and I would say uh, that. Uh, uh, okay, no, I don't have anything else to say at this point. So I'm going to uh, pass it off to uh, uh, the new uh, QTH for Weather 10, also known as WX10. Oh, I didn't even realize it looked like Weather 10 when I wrote it down. <laughs> Uh, very good. So, Bruce, uh, pick it up, and this is my only transmission. I have to get to work here, so I thought I'd uh, uh, just get in here and say hello. Everybody's sounding good. There's no uh, weak stations at all at my QTH today, which is uh, sort of amazing for this band. Today's a very good day on the band, by the way. Normally, it's, uh, it's quite long, and there are, there are days when I've had to go off to work before I've been able to make the contact in the morning because of the, uh, of the length of the band. So, Bruce, over to you. 7-3, everybody. Good to hear um, everybody doing well. WX10, this is K1IC. Uh, thank you, Gary. K1IC from WX10. Well, I may be your weakest station. <laughs> Good morning to everyone. Uh, we are now in Maryland. We made the transition on Friday. What a tough day for travel. Let me just tune, tune up here. 
There we go. A tough day for travel. Uh, snow kicking up, tractor trailers uh, coating the windshield with salt and, uh, and muck. But we made it. It was 499.9 miles door to door, QDH to QTH. And now, <clears throat> I think that I'm probably the southernmost station in this net. A good morning to Frank, uh, who is just a little north of me. I think I'm going to look you up, Frank, W2SDR. And uh, Steve, K2FW, I'm now to the south of you. So, uh, that's the situation. We made the, uh, made the trip uh, safely. <clears throat> it was exhausting. A little bit, uh, about 11 hours. And uh, today, it's bright and sunny. And when I arrived here, my antenna was on the ground. So I had to fix that. I got that fixed yesterday. And I still have to make some more tweaks to it. So uh, <clears throat> somebody mentioned, let's see, it was Bud, uh, Bob, GTH, said he was at 780 feet elevation. We may also be uh, claiming the lowest elevation. We are 18 feet, 1, 8 feet above sea level here. <laughs> so uh, we have uh, several, uh, several contentions for, uh, for record this morning. So this will be in my, uh, I have not uh, hooked up my computer, so I can't listen on SDR yet. Uh, and Frank, I wanted to mention, uh, why don't we, why we don't check, uh, chime in to all of our, all the conversations. Um, I'm illiterate when it comes to digital equipment. Just Ill downright illiterate over it. And when the conversation turns to uh, solid state stuff, uh, I feel like I have nothing to contribute. Everything I have surrounded me is uh, is uh, hollow state uh, tools. And uh, I, I check on a lot of nets, so I get a lot of uh, feedback from, uh, from those. Um, I do better in directed nets than I do in uh, round table. I mean... I'm not sure if Ross was hearing you, uh, um, but I was hearing you just fine here in southeastern uh, Connecticut. So nice to see that you're relocated down there in Maryland, and uh, you're making just finally make sure I've got it. Okay, I do. <coughs> so uh, nice to hear you, Bruce. And uh, we'll be listening closely for you. And as time goes on, just based on van conditions. Um, we'll tend to try to maybe float you to the top. Mm -hmm. I know uh, there'll be times where, uh, where we won't always be able to hear you for the entirety of the net, so that's something we certainly should keep in mind. But usually, like, uh, when, uh, Paul W3BJD uh, checked in a few weeks ago, was I immediately floated him to the top. Three land stations, I think we should do that. So, in any case, take a hear you. Let's see if we can get it over to Ross. W1EKG. Carrier net. So then one VIV. Yeah, hey, nothing hurt there. I uh, I know we acknowledged from check-in. I'm pretty sure that uh, we, we had checked in right kind of in the transition to the uh, official check-in period, but I had noted in in the rundown, so maybe Ross had uh, something that pulled him away from the radio or phone call or something. So if you're listening, Ross, uh, let's swing you in here for round two. And uh, let me do one more listen to this. W1 EKG, if you're there, Ross, and one VIV. 
Yeah, he'd be dealing with a customer. Okay. Well, that would be a good thing, right? So, uh, if you're uh, working with a customer making money or uh, servicing a prior uh, relationship, then that's uh, always a good thing, I would imagine, in that world. <coughs> Let's send it over to Jim. W-A-2-M-E-R and the A-M carrying it. So then one V I V. Yeah, thank you, Joe. And one VIB. This is WA2MER. Good morning. Nice to see everybody. Decent signal so far. Um, I didn't take note of uh, actual signal levels, but everybody's got a really good signal. Very, very easy to copy, uh, although varying signal strengths. And my SX28 here that I'm listening on, uh, the S meter is uh, what we used to refer to as a Scotch S meter. It's, uh, you, can, you can be like blasting out, and if you make it to S9 on that meter, it's, uh, it's a lot. So uh, never bothered to uh, try and calibrate it. But uh, anyway, I'm running uh, the transmitter is the uh, my uh, my standby uh, Millen station with the modulator and uh, going into the L7. I got about 200 watts of carrier this morning. So that's that's it. Weather was 11 degrees at the time the net started, and we got about a foot of snow uh, Monday and Tuesday, um, Sunday night I guess, and it ended up Tuesday morning around 4 a.m. Uh, lot of very very heavy stuff. A lot of trees down. A lot of people without power, fortunately, we didn't, uh, we didn't suffer that fate, but uh, it, it wasn't pretty for a couple of days up here, so. And uh, let's see, a couple of things. Uh, Frank, um, uh, I, I, I don't know why people aren't on uh, more often than we are. I can tell you why I'm not, and it's very similar to what others have said. I, I, I have other things that occupy me. Um, I have a, my, my attention span for sitting in one spot um, for more than a half an hour or an hour at max is limited. So uh, sitting in front of the radio uh, more than once a day for a half an hour or so, it's a lot. So I kind of have to do that. I'm on this net. I'm on the AM, AWA, PM, AM net in the afternoons on Sunday. That's pretty much it. Occasionally I'll be on 3705 in the morning if I'm so inclined. But even then, like after about a half an hour, I start getting fidgety, and I get up and I do other stuff. So I have a transmitter build in the process, and I also play with old cars, although uh, not a lot of that going on uh, uh, right now because it's a little, little bit chilly and blue. And I've got to make one comment before I forget, uh, Bill, KD1SH, uh, I saw your post on, uh, on the mm -hmm. AM phone uh, bulletin board, um, or AM phone website, about looking in dark corners. I congratulate you on that sign, to uh, hear that thing on the air one day. So that's, uh, that was a great sign for you. So like I said, I want to make a comment before I, before I forgot. Uh, with respect to the uh, comments about civility and others, I'm assuming that something happened that I didn't... Uh, I can, I can guess what it is, right? But I mean, um, uh, there's no need to reiterate. If you were paying attention to WF2Q and if you were paying attention to W1GTH, all I can say is I agree with you guys. Okay, so that's my comment on that. Uh, Mary, a little bit of a side comment to your comments, to uh, All right. Um, uh, regardless if it be religion or otherwise, there are societal norms that are taught to people. Um, and that and societal norms tend to be weak uh, and becoming weaker by the moment. All right, the individual. What I what I want to do is my my thing, and you know uh, I don't really care what anybody else. I'm just going to go do it. All right, and uh, so um, somewhere societal norms need to be taught. Is it only in religion? No, there are other venues for that. Uh, there are. Okay, there, there probably always have been. But the notion that uh, reciprocity alone. Uh, is gonna is gonna deal with that. I I, I doubt that. Uh, reciprocity means you're nice to me. I might be nice to you if I have it in me. Um, or if you club me over the head, I'm gonna club you over the head. Right? That's reciprocity, and that is not alone. We need to teach our children stuff. And uh, and regardless, with the we need a set of standards. And uh, religion fulfilled that for most of this country's uh, uh, and, and most of society's um, uh, history. And um, it's, it's going away, and I don't see what's replacing it. So I'll just leave it at that. So uh, anyway, uh, I'm one and done. So I listen out. I, uh, I always like to listen to the end of the net. Nobody comments. And uh, let's see. Well, to see KB2NQN to pick it up. This is WA2MER. Yo, K Jim. KB2NQN. Radio Ross. I'm on a different uh, setup today. Yeah, 
good at exercise this standpoint. You can see how she's doing. So, uh, uh, make some comments. I, I don't know if the signal is as strong as the flex is. But, uh, hopefully it's a hearing. They usually run the flex 5000, but again today on the sun, it's just kind of uh, hearing everybody quite well. And it is, uh, I'm trying to rely solely on the G76 receiver. I mean, it's cold outside, but I'll, I got to go to town and I got some wood to split. And, you know, I just try to get outside every day that the sun shines anyway and do something for a little while. And uh, maybe I'll be back in in the afternoon. But it's, it's, I try to get up and do things. I've got other hobbies as well. I, I put, dabble with model trains and, and that kind of thing. And I always got, it seems like I always got something going on. <laughs> and, uh, I got to do a little more CW. I haven't done much CW lately, and I really do need to get back into doing some CW. I enjoy it. I just don't seem to put the effort into it like I used to. And I've dabbled a little with some of the digital modes with the uh, with the new rig here, Sicom 7300. You know, 100 watts of carrier out of a Clipper 10L amplifier into a 160 meter doublet fed with 600 ohm ladder line. 
in, uh, into a tuner there. So, so that's kind of the brief rundown. Um, but yeah, I don't, I, you know, I'd like to get on more on AM, but like I said, the band, you know, during the day it's okay, but boy, in the evening, when I do get home from work, it's, uh, you know, putting there 4.30, quarter of 5, and this time of year the band starts to go long, and I can hear the, the group down there uh, for a little while, and then everybody kind of disappears, and like I said, I got side band nets I enjoy checking into, and I run one on Monday night, Al, uh, the Vermont Net, which is Al's of the... Uh, manager of so I, I you know I enjoy doing that so that's why I don't get on AM as, as much as I should I, I was on quite a bit there for a while but then I get to doing other stuff so there you go anyway be one round for me as well Joe I will listen out for the final uh, final few stations here and uh, Stray Key Century Club that's something I've got my membership here I just haven't really done much with it I don't know as to whether I've worked anybody or not and again I, I gotta put the effort into it if I'm gonna do it so anyway uh, down to you Jerry uh, 7-3 everybody have a great Sunday we'll see you later W1ZB K-E-1-M-I over yeah very good uh Greg, uh, K-E-1-M-I, here is W-1-Z-B. Okay, um, good morning, everyone. Uh, signals are very good here. Uh, name is Jerry. We're in Andover, Massachusetts, about 25 miles north of Boston. And we're running our uh, home brew rig, a pair of 810s with 805 modulators. Um, and that's uh, link coupled into a N-fed half wave for uh, 75. The uh, receiver is a Helicrafters SX-17 and uh, doing a good job. Uh, uh, Bruce, X1O, you were uh, about S9 here. Uh, with some QSB, so making the trip. And uh, I have Steve, the uh, Gonset G76 sounded good here. You were between S7 and S9. Um, I have one here, so I know about the receiver part end of things. <laughs> Who knows, maybe one day I'll uh, put it on this net too. Uh, let's see, when we woke up this morning, it was uh, 7 degrees, and I think it's up to 8. And, um, yeah, we got a fair amount of snow, those uh, Monday and Tuesday storms. A uh, total of over 16 inches and about, about uh, 9 inches, 8 to 9 inches each day. Um, we did... Uh, take the roof rake out and uh, at least clean up by most of the uh, gutter sections of the house as best we could and uh, hopefully that'll uh, that'll help us out when uh, things start to melt uh, Monday still a lot of stuff on the roof and um, uh, a lot of people in the neighborhood just didn't do anything <laughs> So um, I, I hope uh, I hope it was uh, worth my while to rake the roof um, when I did. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, that's going to be it for me. Um, oh, as far as operating, yeah. Well, we check into about five nets a week on various bands, and uh, we could easily make it ten nets a week. So. Um, we are on just at different frequencies and different modes. So, uh, 73 is everyone, and uh, good net uh, today, Joe. So, uh, over to W1HAF. This is W1ZB, 73s. Okay, very good, W1ZB. From Whiskey One Hotel Alpha Foxtrot, you had a uh, very nice signal, 20 plus plus over here in Waterford, Connecticut. Um, hopefully, I'm getting out okay. I'm not running anything special. I'm just running a stock uh, ICOM 756 Pro 2. 
and it's going into a uh, Maritron ALS 600 solid state amp and into my AT2 KD Power Star tuner tuning a uh, Little Cobra 450 ohm wire line with a 4 to 1 balance to get the, uh, the coax into the shack. And uh, looks like I'm peaking at about 175, 200 watts maybe uh, filling out right now. And I'm just using the stock microphone today, the handheld. Uh, I had the other boom mic on, but I unplugged it and had to plug the microphone in quick, so I grabbed the, the closest one. Everybody has great signals today, and uh, you guys that have snow, um, I'm glad for you. <laughs> we have none. We had a little bit here, right on the coast of Long Island Sound, so it turned to mostly rain, and uh, we really didn't have uh, much snow at all, nothing to really shovel or plow or anything. So it, it kind of went away that right after uh, it snowed. I uh, was watching the weather forecast this morning, and we're supposed to get an inch or two of rain tomorrow and uh, Tuesday. And then by Wednesday, I guess it's supposed to turn cold, and we're probably going to get two to three inches of snow. So that's what they're saying, but I don't believe it. We'll wait and see. Uh, and, uh, geez, there was some bad news on the uh, television this morning, uh, or actually last night. Uh, one of the news anchors here in Connecticut uh, on Channel 3, WFSB, uh, Denise Diasenza passed away uh, suddenly, I guess, and unexpectedly. She was only 61 years old. She was the only anchor on the uh, WFSB. So everybody there seems pretty broken up. And uh, that's, uh, that's very sad. So um, let's see. Um, I'm going to the week. Um, I do get out four or five bucks, so I'm usually on sideband, um, some local nets, um, occasionally e-cars, and uh, on 40 meters. But most of my activity is up here on 75. And uh, AM, I try to get on as much as I can. Um, my old uh, AM stations in the basement uh, haven't had that on the air in a long time, so. All right, well, let's see. I'm not going to hold it much longer. I will say this will be my last uh, transmission. I'll be one and done. I'll be listening. I'm going to turn it over to Bill, KD1SH. Over to you. From one Hotel Alpha Foxtrot. LK Harrison, very good. Thank you very much. And good morning to everyone on the AM Carrier Net from KD1SH. Bill up here in the quiet corner, but not the silent corner of the little state of Connecticut, uh, where it's uh, very much snow covered up here. I, uh, I don't think we got as much as uh, people to the north of me. Uh, I know somebody that lives up near uh, Worcester, Mass, and he got 24 inches up there. Uh, I think maybe we might have gotten eight here at the most, uh, maybe more like six. I don't know. It was hard to tell. It was windy and it was drifting a bit, but, uh, but winter is here anyway. So anyway... Jim, uh, yeah, you saw you saw my post there. I, I just could not resist uh, posting about that uh, that find there. Uh, for everybody else, uh, what happened is uh, I went to a little flea market, and I think I've mentioned this flea market before a few times on the air. The uh, the Vintage Radio and Communications Museum of Connecticut up in Windsor, a uh, very very nice little place, and uh, well worth a visit, even if they're not having a flea market. Uh, four or five times a year, they have a little. Uh, a little radio flea market, uh, ham stuff, uh, old collectible radios, you know, electronics in general, things like that. It's a small little affair. It's bigger when they can have it outdoors, uh, which they do in the summer months. But it, it draws a surprising amount of people for a uh, for a small affair like that. And lots of fun and a uh, good place to meet a few hams that uh, you speak to regularly or uh, speak to but have never met. And uh, I met Carl up there, uh, WA1KPD, and. Uh, and Ron, uh, K1VYU, that was a lot of fun, and uh, a handful of us were up there, and uh, Larry, uh, uh, WA1LGQ, uh, and uh, a good time. Anyway, uh, the museum uh, often 
sells off a lot of their surplus stuff. And boy, they do have a lot of stuff up there. People donate things and uh, they stash it away. And uh, a lot of t a lot of stuff they're uh, more than happy to get rid of. So they uh, they relieve themselves of some of the uh, excess burden. And uh, anyway, I was poking around in the dark corners of my flashlight because they have a lot of uh, poorly lit areas with shelving and stuff stacked on the floor and buried under big piles of stuff. And uh, came across a great big uh, great big black box about three feet high and two feet square rolling on caster wheels and very very heavy and wasn't sure what it was and uh, called some of the guys over from the uh, museum they didn't know much about it either but they said they were glad to get rid of it and uh, opened up a door on the side and looked inside and there's this great big Peter Dahl transformer 3 kV uh, at 3 amps 9,000 watts uh, continuous commercial service very uh, very impressive doesn't look that old uh, the the, uh, the filter caps are great big oil fill jobs uh, the uh, diode rectifiers are a very well built uh, great big bridge rectifier with heat sinks and uh, the, the thing probably weighs close to 200 pounds. It took, uh, took four of the museum guys to help me load it into the back of my truck, and uh, it's now sitting in my basement on its caster wheels, and, uh, you know, uh, we got it for... Uh, probably less than what it would be worth as uh, as scrap iron so uh, that was the, that was my find for the day anyway and I've, I've been planning for years on building a bigger amplifier and uh, something capable of a comfortable legal limit uh, on AM and uh, and here we go so that was uh, that was a find and uh, and Steve uh, KB2NQN uh, good to hear your G76 on the air I just picked up a G76 uh, back at Deerfield back at Nearfest uh, a few months back and uh, it has not yet uh, taken its uh, its place on the on the workbench to get all uh, recapped and spruced up but it's in very good shape and uh, hopefully it won't be too much longer before uh, before that's on the air so that's going to be uh, that's going to be a lot of fun and as far as uh, i know uh, frank was mentioning uh, you know some of us he hears us on the on the net but we never get on the air i i have to admit and maybe it's a little odd for a ham but uh, i'm I don't know if I want to say shy, but a little reserved, I think, sometimes. And, uh, I spend a lot of time tuning around in the evenings. I'm not yet retired, so uh, I'm not available in the afternoons or, or mornings on weekdays. But I'll spend a lot of time tuning around in the AM window, and I'll hear a lot of good QSOs, good stations, excellent sounding audio, uh, good subjects of conversation. And I'll, I'll be thinking, boy, I'd love to join in here, but then I'm, you know, uh, well, you know, they don't really want me interrupting their QSO. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. If I want to bother these guys, you know they've uh, they've got a good number for their uh, their little round table right now. I don't want to jump in there and uh, you know interrupt it, and uh, so I just sit back and listen. And then the next thing you know, of course, they all sign off, and I'm thinking, boy, I wish I had joined in. So maybe that's something I just have to get over sometime. A net gives you a little bit more uh, incentive, I think, to uh, to join in where uh, otherwise you might not. So uh, I, I suppose I should. Uh, Try to be a little bit more outgoing on the air and uh, join in on a few QSOs rather than just sitting back listening. But uh, I find myself listening more often than not. So, so that's probably why you don't hear me in there that often. And uh, maybe sometime I'll work on doing something about that. As far as all the the stuff that may have gone on before, I didn't get in here until late, so I didn't hear it. And uh, always unfortunate, uh, regardless uh, when that kind of stuff happens. And I I always try to keep in mind that. Uh, whether it's true or not, I'm, I'm assuming that a lot of people are listening to us. You know, uh, people listening to us on shortwave radios, uh, youngsters that may someday become hams, and, uh, you know, people that may or may not have an interest in ham radio. But, I, you know, whether it's true or not, I'm going on the assumption that uh, there are a lot of people listening, and uh, each and every one of us are ambassadors for the ham radio hobby. You know, we, we're, we are representing it, so I, I, try to, uh, I try to look at it that way. Anyway, 7-3 and good morning to everyone on the AM Carrier Net. And uh, assuming I'm here when I'm through with breakfast, i got to go out in the kitchen and uh, start that. Uh, I will uh, make a brief appearance, I think, for round two. So uh, good morning in 7-3, and uh, I turn it over to uh, to Rob, N1ALF. Good morning from Katie. one sh Hello. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. An AM carrier net, a chilly part, and all to my Connecticut neighbors there. And um, uh, Frank and uh, Perry, good morning. 
Well, we're on with those guys every day. So we're fortunate that we have the time and uh, the other half that doesn't mind us being on the radio a lot. <laughs> Actually, people tell you she prefers me downstairs. <laughs> if the radio's not working, she go get N1BCG Clark over here and get it fixed, which we got to keep an eye because he'll be showing up. Soon. Um, Anyway, yeah, you know to run down to K7DYY, 250 watt uh, carrier on there, and or whatever stuff the Johnson Viking Matchbox and all the implements of audio destruction here. Um, as you can tell, I'm a Frank Zappa fan. But anyway, um, 65 years old. I was born in 1955. Uh, three sisters. Uh, my father ruled with an iron fist, but was fair, and. Um, uh, yeah, I went to church, learned good things, but I think it all starts from home. You know, before you even get to church, you know, I was taught to respect my elders. Um, I knew I was accountable for everything I did, and I think that had a lot to do with a lot of us that are, are, are with my age or older, we, uh, those days. But a quick one there, my, remember my nephew was, um, my nephew was born and I said something to my sister in relation to, you know, what he was doing or the way she was handling it. And she came back, she goes, well, uh, I'm not going to raise my son like uh, our father did. I said, well, you didn't turn out too bad. It's just, I don't know. I don't know whether parents take time or the entitlement thing there or uh, me first uh, world. Uh, I've been a truck driver for a long time up and across the United States how many times. and. Uh, just people's attitude and driving is just totally ludicrous. Um, I'm a first responder here, so I see a lot. I hear what goes on in the whole entire state of Connecticut. They're on the highways and stuff like that in local areas. And it's just multiple accidents of tractor trailer trucks, regular cars and stuff. Yes, uh, what was it Saturday morning? A uh, Tesla, automatic mode. What's the... Uh, his dog in the back and attending to his dog while his Tesla is in automatic mode. In the meantime, a state trooper was pulled over with a car broken down on the right side of the lane there, and uh, he rear ends it. So there you go. But uh, anyway, nah. People are just me first in the way, you know. It's even with the Thanksgiving shopping. I, I, I just hate to see go out there because everybody's pushing and shoving and swearing at you and stuff like that and then they sit down for one day for giving thanks. <laughs> if you can't do it 364 days out of the year, as my other half says, don't bother one day. But anyway, so that's why I have dash cams. <laughs> Had a confrontation with a gentleman there and uh, all caught on dash cam. And I know, the, you know, very close with local authorities here, so they came, uh, you know, I reported it, and they came up and turned around and said, all right, Rob, let's see the videotape, as Warner Wolf would say. So they went over and talked to the gentleman and haven't seen him since. So anyway, on that note, let's... 450 ohm ladder line. I'm using the regular crappy brown stuff with the window. I've had no problem with it, running through the hedges and everything. Um, so maybe I'll build some, uh, you know, two-inch... Uh, ladder line there without the, the windows but I haven't had any problem with that and that goes into uh, two little PVC pipes drilled into the window sill. <laughs> it's an old window there with uh, wing nuts there to unattach my ladder line so anyway that's my old buzzer transmission I won't be in for a second round um, I'm trying to think what else I wanted to note there so well I hope everybody has a good and uh, safe uh, week there and uh, congratulations to all the ones that are uh, up and retiring soon and the ones who are retiring I got about another three years before I go and uh, can't wait I got plenty to do here so seven threes and way to left I think back to Joe because I don't think anybody came underneath me yeah I think that's true Rob but we'll give a quick listen just in case <coughs> And uh, my time, unfortunately, is uh, is going to be running short here. So I think I have enough uh, capacity to set up round two, but I don't know if I'll be able to stay. So I've just got a commitment that I need to get to, so I apologize for that. Let's give a listen just to see if there's anybody we'd be tacking on here. Any other check-ins to the net, please call now. This is N1VIV. The W1EKG is back. W1 Bravo Charlie Charlie. Okay, so let's see. We've got Ross. I had you in there before, Ross, so we'll get you. Um, and then we had. 
was it Paul W1GTX, was that right? Yes, that is correct. Okay, good morning, W1GTX. Very good, we've got you. And then the, the, the final station there, I apologize. I wasn't quick enough with the pen. If you could give it to me one more time, there's one additional station. W1 Bravo Charlie Charlie. Yeah, very good. Well, I should have picked that up quicker. W1 BBC. No, BCC. My apologies. Kind of, my brain's uh, playing tricks on me when you see those letters together. You just assume it's BB, but it's BCC. Uh, can I get your name and location, sir? My name is Joe, and I'm located in Stonington, Connecticut. Yeah, good morning. Uh, name is Brad. I'm in uh, southwest New Hampshire in Winchester, uh, listening on a 75A4 and transmitting on a 7300. Yeah, okay, very good, uh, Brad. Nice to make your acquaintance. You've kind of come pretty close to the end of the uh, AM carrier net. We meet every Sunday morning here at 8 a.m. local time uh, on uh, 3835. And uh, my name is Joe. My call is N1VIV, and I'm in southeastern Connecticut. So uh, you're making it here just uh, fine. I'm able to copy you, no problem. So... Um, I'm going to set up uh, round two to the best of my ability, but I unfortunately I'm going to need to leave you guys to play that out and see if folks want to linger and stay for uh, additional comments and uh, feel free to, uh, to do so. I'll stay for a few minutes, but I'm going to be kind of tight and I, I'm not sure how much I'll be able to get back to the switch. So, um, so you know what? Let me... Uh, let me flip it over to our uh, new uh, check-in, because I don't believe we've heard from you before, Brad. And why don't you send it back to me, and then I'll set up round two, just because uh, I want to welcome you as much as, uh, as you can uh, with the <laughs> I've got available. I don't want to leave you straggling at the end. So. Uh, Brad, go ahead and make a transmission and uh, send it back to me. My call is N1VIV. W1 uh, BBC, uh, BCC. Man, I'm going to stick on that for some reason. W1 B. CC. Over to you, uh, Brad. N1ZIB. N1ZIB. Think W1 blind carbon copy. Uh, hey, thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, been listening for quite some time this morning. I don't know if W1 GTH uh, is uh, still out there, but uh, I wanted to tell him that I finally got myself a real antenna, and I also have up a uh, true ladder line, 125 foot uh, doublet. In my case, uh, the 600 ohm ladder line terminates outdoors in a weatherproof box to a four to one balance, and then about a three foot piece of coax to the tuner. Uh, I could not be happier. Uh, I'm a recycled guy. I was away from the hobby for about 48 years. Uh, for the last year or so, I've had a temporary 60-foot sloper uh, with terrible performance. It's like my ears have been unstopped. Um, and I am truly amazed at how the 25 watts from this thing uh, actually work. Uh, and it's interesting because my last uh, AM transmitter was a DX60, and that probably didn't get more than 25 uh, watts out into the wire uh, as well. Uh, I do have some vintage gear, and I am hoping to have a, a more period correct uh, AM signal soon. Uh, thanks very much for the opportunity. Uh, N1ZIB, W1 blind carbon copy. Yeah, I've got you, Brad. No problem. W1 blind carbon copy. This is N1 VIV. My call is Norway 1 Victor India Victor. So, yeah, thanks for stopping by. It's great to make your acquaintance. Please come by and join us as often as you can on Sunday mornings. We're always here for the most part and uh, usually have uh, somewhere between, <clears throat> anywhere between 12 and today, 22 check-ins. Pretty amazing. This is a pretty large group uh, for Russ. I really appreciate everybody noting whether they're staying or, or leaving after round one because that certainly makes uh, managing this a little bit uh, uh, easier. So I'm going to set up round two. I'm going to be able to stay for about five minutes, and unfortunately I'm going to need to go. So the folks are able to make notes. Here's the rundown for round two. 
and I just want to acknowledge too, we've got Paul from Massachusetts. So we're going to get you in here, Paul, uh, in this round two, uh, for sure. So let's see. Um, uh, just on a couple of quick uh, brief comments, uh, really uh, enjoyed everybody's commentary with regard to, I don't know exactly what initiated the, the challenges, maybe it was here on Frequency, it was before I uh, showed up, but in any case, uh, some very interesting comments with regard to the state of our uh, moral fabric, I guess, and, and to that end, uh, for what it's worth, I'm, I'm off to church, so uh, not to say that that's everybody's uh, uh, you know, a bent or uh, inclination or, or pathway to to uh, better living, but uh, it's one of one aspect of what I try to do, at least on occasion, to uh, kind of enrich myself. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, spiritually. So that's just my two cents, and uh, but I appreciated everybody's uh, comments today for sure. So, I'm going to set up round two here uh, after my comments, which are going to end very soon. I'm going to send it to you, Al, W1VTP. W1VTP would send it to uh, Howie. I think Howie said he was going to say Al, but I'm not 100%. Let me just see if Howie's still there. That way we can know for sure. Are you here for round two, Howie, WF2Q? Okay, that's a no. I just didn't make a note. That was the only station I didn't make a notation on. Okay, so it would be Al W1VTP, and then it would go over to Larry ME1S in Gray Mean. I believe Larry said he was going to stay. Ross is back, so ME1S would send it to Ross W1EKG, and then W1EKG would send it to Bill. KD1SH. So W1EKG, Ross, you would send it to Bill. <coughs> KD1SH. Then KD1SH would send it over to Paul. W1GTX. W1GTX would send it back over to Brad if Brad is going to stay. That would be Whiskey One, a blind carbon copy. Bravo, Charlie, Charlie. So Paul W1GTX. <clears throat> would send it over to W1VCC. After that, I think uh, folks are going to be on their own. Please feel free to uh, linger and use the uh, frequency. But I'm going to listen for a few minutes, and I've got to shift gears. So the first couple, just for a reminder, it goes to you, Al, and then to Larry, anyone S, and then Ross, W1EKG, KD1SH, W1GTX and W1BCC. So that would be a, some semblance of a round two. And I'll listen for as long as I can. I gotta run around, I gotta shave. I might get back down here before I have to run, but uh, I'm not 100% sure. So thanks very much for a fabulous net. And I'll send it on down the list here for, uh, for a go at those stations that I have notes who are were interested in staying. <clears throat> Have a great Sunday all the way around. Boy, my voice is starting to give me trouble again just from <clears throat> talking that little bit. That's not a good sign. It's a sure sign that I need to be quiet now. W1 uh, VTP and the AM carrier net. This is N1VIV. Yeah, okay. N1VIV and the carrier net, <clears throat> AM carrier net from W1 VTP. And uh, <clears throat> this all arose, this whole discussion about uh, uh, behavior and, and whatnot, it actually came from a positive experience this morning where um, Frank and his uh, son Steve, not Steve, uh, Perry, uh, were holding a, a QSO just a few KC up. And uh, when I first came on, I didn't recognize their voices. And uh, I said, oh, boy, what are we going to do here? Uh, so I initially set up frequency, uh, down frequency a little bit. But then I was listening, and, and they made mention of the upcoming uh, uh, AM carrier pre-net. And that they uh, did better do something to, uh, to accommodate uh, us and... Uh, uh, I think Frank made mention that uh, they 
considered moving up frequency, and then they decided, well, let's just join the uh, the net. So it's a positive experience, and uh, I'm not. I'm sure you're all aware of the uh, the radio amateurs code. It was uh, actually uh, initially created by uh, the original amateurs code was written by Paul M. Siegel, W9EEA, back in 1928. And uh, it was, uh, this is quite a list, but the very first paragraph in this code is the radio amateur is, and then it goes down through several paragraphs. Anyway, he, the radio amateur is considerate. He or she never knowingly operates in such a way as to lessen the pleasure of others. And uh, I think that uh, is a wonderful way of expressing uh, being considerate of others and doing what you can to accommodate uh, uh, the other amateur radio operators. Understanding that Part 97, 101D uh, says that whoever is on a given frequency has the frequency and yeah, that uh, no one has a right to, for example, a net has a right to set up shop on that frequency or close enough by to interfere with it because they uh, are in a communication and that no one is to interrupt that communication or interfere with that communication in any way. So considering that, <clears throat> and then uh, uh, this paragraph out of the radio amateur's code uh, that the radio amateur is Consider it, he or she never knowingly operates in such a way as to lessen the pleasure of others. It's kind of a two-way street, isn't it? But we had a, a wonderful positive example of of uh, a couple of uh, radio amateur operators uh, being very considerate of us as a as a net and uh, actually joining us. So uh, our hats off to uh, Frank and uh, and Perry uh, for setting a wonderful example of uh, this uh, positive, positive experience. And then somehow we switched lanes and it went into the other, <laughs> the other possibility. And uh, so there you go, you have the rest of the story. Over to you, Larry. Good to hear you on this morning. And uh, hopefully you're making it up there in the frozen north. We had one degree this morning. That's all we had. We searched the place. We looked all over the place, and the only degrees we could find was one. Any one S at the carrier net, W1VTP. W1VTP and the AM carrier net, any one S. Very good, Al. Yeah, well, Frank and Perry are good guys, no doubt about it. Uh, you know, they're... They're one of us, uh, AMers, and uh, not that not that all good hams have to be AMers, but you know they they were aware of our net. Frank checked in last week, I believe, and Perry maybe. I think they both checked in last week, and uh, you know I've, I've talked to. I haven't talked to Perry all that much, but I talked to Frank for many, many years off and on, and, uh, you know, they're, like I say, one of us. <laughs> um, okay, well, uh, first of all, Joe, I want to want to thank and commend you for uh, allowing discussion, uh, allowing, if not encouraging, discussion of a topic that can be controversial, but, again, if, uh, things we disagree on are are discussed respect respectfully. You know that's a good thing. Uh, it's very possible to disagree and have a respectful discussion. Uh, and I, I think most of us on here uh, are respectful to one another. And. Uh, you know, that, that's that's the way arguments are, 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 you know, are moved along is by discussing things and not uh, not ignoring them. And you know, uh, regarding the amateur's code, I can't remember if one of the elements was avoiding uh, avoiding politics and controversial subjects. Uh, but I don't think that's necessarily a good thing. I think uh, as long as it stays respectful, 
uh, discussion of anything on the air is fair game and should be encouraged because otherwise you end up with a lot of boring QSOs that, uh, <laughs> uh, or potentially boring QSOs, you know, uh, where the subject matter is trivial and uh, may not be of great interest to any of the participants. But the key, of, of course, is respect, and that's what it all comes down to. And I, I want to clarify, in case I wasn't clear, I wasn't in my previous uh, previous comments. I wasn't dissing religion or anyone's particular religion or or, or anything like that. I was I was just uh, offering an argument against uh, the uh, position that religion uh, was necessary to have. Uh, a respect for others and a good set of uh, of moral values and principles, and I, I stand by that uh, position that it is not. It may be, and I, I, as I said before, it may be sufficient, but not necessary. And I thank uh, I thank Jim for his comments and. Uh, uh, Rob N1 ALF, uh, uh, the comments about being passed down uh, uh, in your upbringing, uh, that's an important element. But I still say the, the intellectually curious will, will arrive at the right uh, conclusion uh, through, through, through uh, uh, through logic, you know, and, and the, the basic premise that we're all in this together and in, in terms of uh, none of us are, none of us are special and deserve special rights, you know, we, we all have the same rights and my rights end where yours begin. And uh, the principle of recipro reciprocity and every major religion has its own statement of uh, the principle of reciprocity. Uh, of course, the Christian religion has the golden rule, uh, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. But every major religion has, has the same thing, just worded slightly differently. You know, whether you're talking about Hindu or Islam or Judaism, uh, you'll find it. So, uh, anyway, um, let's see, what else? As far as, I know Frank's no longer listening, but as far as, I forgot to comment on his uh, uh, question about where are all of us during the week in between uh, AM carrier nets and for me my answer would be I'm either on other nets or doing some other obligation besides ham radio I do have other obligations besides <laughs> you know ham radio is not an obligation it's something I do for enjoyment but uh, you know and most of my amateur radio time is spent uh, not on the air but uh, working on some piece of equipment while I am uh, maybe listening to somebody else's QSO. So I, like most of us, I spend a lot more time listening than I do transmitting. But I do get on the air several times a week. Uh, the only amateur radio obligation I have is running the uh, AWA top band that Monday nights on 1945 kilohertz at 8 p.m. Uh, that's uh, my only amateur radio obligation, something that I have to be there for. Um, but anyway, uh, let's see, did I cover it? Yeah, Bruce, I heard you pretty well uh, during your transmission. There was some guy dumping a carrier on you for part of your transmission and and, and uh, lost that. But aside from that, you were Q5 up here. So glad you made it down to Maryland safe and sound, and uh, we'll look forward to talking to you on the uh, AWA PMAM net this afternoon near this frequency at 4 p.m. 
So uh, over to you, Ross. 73 all. Uh, good net, Joe. Uh, thanks again for running it. Uh, W1EKG and the AM carrier or net, NE1S. Uh, let's see. Good morning, Larry, and everybody else here on net. Ah, there we go. Squeeze a little more power out of the old ART-13 here. Um, I don't know why it varies so much. It's kind of weird. Uh, huh. Okay. Um, yeah, you know, I teach uh, classes in ham radio, and uh, as does Paul, Mr. GTX, who's going to be coming up here shortly. And um, one of the uh, one of the things that um, I tell my classes when we're getting into all this is that. Uh, you know, the most most important thing is, is to be polite, you know, and, and I'm always amazed at how how that holds true, particularly on, uh, you know, that's part of the problem. I got a little too much SWR in here. Uh, wow. Yeah, well, it's weird when you turn the controls on your antenna to and nothing happens. Just a little bit dis disheartening, I guess. Um, that, that's not right. Wow. All sorts of stuff going on over there. Um, I need to clean the rebase this time. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's always interesting, you know, if you ever listen to single, I mean, uh, to chicken band radio, it's always interesting to know the differences. Operating my AIT 13 down on this frequency, so it, uh, it it gets a little squirrely uh, down here on, uh, on on 3835. But wow, well, I got just as much power coming down the antenna as I have coming up. That's not good. Um, so um, we, we we try to encourage our, our ham radio clubs to uh, attention to poor people's feelings and all that good too. And uh, I know that there's some nuts on the radio where we can actually have nothing but political or religious discussions, and those are sometimes good too. Uh, people understand that um, there's going to be a certain amount of uh, respect. So, uh, I need to turn this radio more on this frequency. <laughs> it's just all over the place. Um, so, uh, Getting ready for Christmas, got a lot going on here, got a lot of customers looking for stuff. I don't get on the air much during the week. Occasionally a customer will come in and see the radios and say, what's all that about? And I'll turn the radio on and, and uh, see if we can hit uh, Europe or something on 20 meters. And uh, it's always fun. It's always fun to do things like that. But uh, it's, uh, in fact, uh, yesterday when Paul uh, GTX was here, we had a lady come in to drop some uh, pick some things up, I guess. She was picking up, and um, she was quite fascinated with the whole radio thing. And uh, we uh, did what we could to try and encourage her. I gave her a couple of co a copy of QST, I guess it was, and uh, maybe we can uh, grab another another uh, YL to get into the hobby here, which would always be good. Now, yep, whoa, something's coming on. There we go. There's a whole bunch of power. But a whole bunch of SWR, too. I don't know what the heck's happening here. i got to really reevaluate this thing. Uh, rather than me twiddling knobs and boring all of you, I'm going to send it over to Bill, uh, KD1SH. This is W1EKG. I hope I didn't blow anybody's ears out playing with the radio here. This is, uh, have, have a great day. Okay, Ross, very good. Uh, no, no problem. The, uh, the radio doesn't sound bad here at all. Uh, no uh, no obnoxious audio characteristics or anything like that. KD1SH down here in the quiet corner of Connecticut where the sun is shining on the on the snow and uh, kind of a kind of a nice picture through my uh, through my radio room window here.
But uh, yeah, as far as uh, as far as discussing politics on the radio, there's certainly no rule against it. Although some people may uh, you know have self-imposed rules there. I uh, I can be very politically opinionated. I uh, you know I, I have an interest in politics and. Uh, you know stuff like that, but I, I I tend to keep my political discussions for uh, for smaller groups where uh, I'm reasonably assured that we're all more or less on the same page. Uh, not that I'm afraid of uh, discourse, but uh, it's just that uh, you know feelings don't get hurt and feathers don't get ruffled and things like that when you're uh, in a group where pretty much everybody is uh, is of the same frame of mind. So uh, you know unless the uh, unless the gauntlet is obviously thrown down, you know, in polite company and people want to discuss it i just prefer to uh, prefer to avoid it unless uh, unless i know like i said we're all uh, we're all pretty much on the same page so yeah and the fcc certainly uh, as uh, as al pointed out uh, specifies that no frequency belongs to anybody else uh, other than uh, first come first serve so to speak uh, but uh, but that having been said and, and this has no uh, no reference whatsoever to what happened with uh, with Perry and Frank and all that. That was an entirely above board, uh, you know, a different kind of situation, and uh, you know, not uh, not even remotely the same thing. But people will sometimes uh, take offense to uh, to nets occupying a uh, frequency that they want to talk on, and uh, and again, like I said, this is not in reference to what happened before. Uh, but I've heard that kind of thing happen before, where uh, you know, well, we're having a QSO on this net or on this on this frequency, so uh, you're going to have to go have your net somewhere else, and. Uh, Unfortunately, that doesn't happen that often. But I kind of figure that uh, not so much uh, by FCC rules, because again, the FCC says that whoever has the frequency, uh, you know, owns it, you know, at that point. But I think uh, common courtesy and common sense kind of dictate that uh, just as uh, on the road or uh, on the ocean, in the, you know, in a boat. Uh, you would give way to the vessel who is uh, who the least capable of making course changes. You know, uh, y- you would uh, y- you would give way to a net you know, because obviously they're uh, in the same position as uh, as a vessel at sea who has uh, a lesser ability to make a course change. Uh, on, in the case of a net, you were expecting uh, to find that net there at that certain time at that certain frequency. And you've got a whole lot of people who have uh, scheduled their time around that. And taking that entire net of 20, 30, 40, 50 people or whatever and saying, hey, let's move to another frequency because somebody else is, uh, is using it right now. And, you know, it's a little bit more difficult. There's a, there's a burden there. So, uh, you know, FCC rules aside, I, I would say that just common courtesy would dictate that, uh, you know, you, you give ground to the net because uh, it's just not as convenient uh, for the net to, uh, to QSY as it is for, you know, three or four or five guys, whatever, you know, uh, just having a QSO, but uh, anyway, that's my uh, that's my take on that. Um, I will be off in a little while back to uh, the old homestead where uh, we're cleaning up my mom's estate and we're we're painting and cleaning up and all that kind of fun stuff. So uh, I'll be uh, be doing that kind of thing in a little while. And uh, I was very happy to find that great big power supply there. That was uh, that was a joy. Uh, I, uh, I'm glad I poked around in that dark corner with my little flashlight, and, uh, and boy, when they opened up that little hinge door on that thing, and I looked inside and saw that great big, uh, basically brand new looking uh, Peter Dahl transformer in there, 3 kV at 3 amps. It's, uh, I knew that thing was coming on with me, and, uh, and no electrolytic caps to change out because uh, the caps are all uh, oil filled. I may even say no PCBs on the side of the caps; they're General Electric caps. So that's a uh, that's a comforting thing right there too. So very very well built box and uh, close to 200 pounds worth and. Uh, now I get to sit down and, uh, well, amongst all my other projects, I've got projects on top of projects, including getting my uh, recently acquired BMW, BMW 5100B on the air. So, uh, and my G76. But I got to line up some tubes, and I'm kind of thinking.